final episode of Along the China Front in Western Arunachal Pradesh, we travel to Yangtze and take you to the Tawang War Memorial. The deadly June 2020 Galwan clashes between the Indian and Chinese armies have changed the rules of the strategic game in terms of India's foreign policy and military posture. Post-Galwan, China's PLA failed in two more incursion attempts in Yangtze, Tawang sector in western Arunachal Pradesh at the other extremity of the LAC. Both times, they were literally and figuratively beaten back. This unofficially publicized footage from October 2021 shows a Chinese attempt to alter facts on the ground, like in Ladakh, that was repulsed too. In December 2022, another attempt to seize the higher ground was also foiled. I think but the only way to deal with Chinese is from a position of strength and that is what makes them feel sad and bad that the, the Indians, whatever hard and however hard they might want to try, Yang says something which we hold. When we occupy that particular height, they always feel that they are being looked down upon and you know everything is right under our nose. So they don't like that. Strat News Global drives to and through the Yangtze area to take you on this visual virtual trip to this little known and less traveled to area. We are headed to the Chumi Gyatse or Holy Waterfalls. Chumig means water holes and Gyatse or Gyatsar is rosary. This is where Padma Sambhava or Guru Rinpoche is believed to have flung his rosary against a rock and created 108 streams that gushed out of the mountain. There are two routes from Tawang to the Chumi Gyatse. One is about 95 kilometers and takes approximately five hours via Rojangra on a built-up road. We take the road less traveled on close to Bumla. It's a distance of about 70 kilometers that will take a little over three hours. We follow a couple of SUVs with tourists with the undulating mountains, some with a thin layer of snow, others barren with black soil beckoning us. The overnight snow has turned parts of the road muddy and Ravi, our driver, needs some deft maneuvering to get us through as we pass army encampments and a medical truck. The sound of silence is figuratively deafening at a quick stop at one of the lakes dotting the area, the Tso Takpai, except from the slight flutter of the Tibetan prayer flags in the breeze. At about 14,200 feet above sea level, we soak in the sun and the silence at this still semi-frozen lake with prayer flags casting larger-than-life shadows on the pristine snow. We then move onwards. Work is constantly on in these higher reaches to improve the roads. Sichu is a small quaint village in Damteng and we cross the footbridge with prayer flags to the other bank of the river. Sichu, which translates to hot water, is famous in these parts for its natural springs. The water is too hot to touch and needs to be mixed with cold river water in this open-air jacuzzi. The Tibetan prayer flags reflecting in the steamy water are the perfect advertisement for more tourism in this little visited area. Ravenous after a few hours of travel in the mountains, we've ordered some Maggie noodles for breakfast and a local lady who runs a small shop and a spotless kitchen has made a spicy breakfast which we wolf down. We enjoy a few moments with a rosy-cheeked child 
even babysitting for a bit. While mom does the dishes and some washing. A walk across another bridge takes us to a familiar site in this sector. A border roads organization crew improving connectivity on the other bank of the river. Road work, construction and maintenance is one of the few livelihoods for locals. The figurines on our dashboard which depict the famous hear no evil, see no evil and speak no evil triumvirate are a perfect precursor to the short trip from Sechu to Chumigyatse, the holy waterfalls. The last part of our journey is a trek for about a kilometer to the Cascades, which are about 250 meters from the LAC. The wind factor makes the weather even more crisp. As we take short, sure steps, trying not to overexert at this altitude. Our Indian Army host enjoys orienting us about the Yangtze axis as he paints the picture for us. Crossing another bridge over troubled waters, finally we are at the spectacular, breathtaking Cascades. What's believed to be unique about these falls is that they don't originate from melting snow but from a source within the mountain. There are several narratives about the waterfalls. One of the many legends that dominate is connected to the Buddhist mystic Guru Rinpoche. The story goes that Padmasambhava, who is revered by the followers of Tibetan Buddhists as the second Buddha, flung his Rudraksha rosary containing 108 beads. They hit the rocks, resulting in 108 waterfalls. He is said to have done this after a challenge from a bone lama or monk. Another story has it that he created the falls after fervent prayers from local residents to cure them of a plague that had spread through the area. Drinking the water is believed to have curative properties. The Chinese have an observation tower, surveillance cameras, a reported projector and a large screen overlooking the falls for live images for devotees and for its forces. Locals say an original temple which is believed to be almost 500 years old was destroyed during the Chinese invasion of Tibet in 1950. Ironic considering the communist atheistic state is still trying to use religion as a tool to woo Tibetans while constantly oppressing them. It is very ironic. The Chinese regime will um, repress religion most of the time, but it will try to weaponize religion when it, when it suits it. Um, and I think uh, the, 
the threats to India are, are um, is something that uh, not only India itself but the rest of the world should take very seriously. The foiled Yangtze intrusion attempts in October 2021 and December 2022 are reminders of why the Chinese claim parts of the area. One is to usurp the religious import of the Holy Falls and two to try and alter facts on the ground like the attempts in Ladakh. That would give them a bird's eye view directly to Damteng and other areas in the Tamang sector. They want to change the, the, their line of patrolling and the, the, the way they, they can control like something like happened in Galohan, that if you advance one or two kilometers, in many places in Arunachal, the ridge is not as clear that as a cartographer would like to be. Sometimes it's not easy to fix a ridge and you need to be to, to agree on, on this and this exercise has never been done. I think China is happy that is vague so that they, they can uh, bother India from time to time when, they, when it's convenient for them or when they want to make a point. We spend a few moments in the prayer hall Gompa, a serene, silent island with high-speed wind whistling all around us. There are a few other narratives associated with the waterfalls and its creation. Tibetan books document a guru named Lavapa, considered to be an avatar of the Manjushri, the embodiment of all of Buddha's wisdom as the creator of the waterfalls. The legend is that three gurus, Lavapa, Nakpopa and Matipa, who came from Tibet to this area to meditate, lived in three caves on different sides of the mountains. One of them is said to have run out of ink while writing in between meditating. He is believed to have thrown his pen, which landed upside down near the cave, giving rise to an upside down bamboo grove, which locals are still searching for. While both sides closely observe activities on the other side, we are told the Chinese have often taken control of Chinese-made DJI drones if they are anywhere close to the LAC, illustrating the need for both individuals and state institutions to avoid using Chinese drones. India has also upgraded its intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance ISR, in the region by several notches we are told in off-the-record briefings, details of which Strat News is not publicizing for operational security reasons. Indian forces look directly down into the many valleys on the Tibetan side of the LAC. In fact, Yangtze is the only disputed area in Arunachal Pradesh that is firmly and physically under Indian control. A fact proven by both recent major attempts at incursion being beaten back. The army has been able to counter the PLA's every move because it has been much better prepared since October 2021, with a close watch being kept from the heights and countermeasures employed at every key point. Pre-warned is pre-armed, so it is essential that we use all our means of surveillance, whether it be our drones or satellites or surveillance or even uh, with any kind of, uh, you know, uh, you could say an arrangement with countries that is absolutely essential. We just wanted your comments on reports suggesting that there is a US real-time intelligence that was given in that incident which helped India. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, if you read this, some books have been written uh, about Tibet that uh, the CIA and the Americans have done everything. So I think similarly, what's happening now in Yangtze, uh, uh, I think it's more exaggerated. And India, I'm sure, I know that India has the capacity to uh, see. The need to ramp up civilian tourist footfall to buttress India's holding of the strategically critical area has been recognized but needs to be implemented fully. 
India commands these heights, which give forces a strategic view to any Chinese activity across the LAC, its many PLA garrisons, and the Xiaokang, or dual-use border villages. India woke up very late to this um, threat of the, these villages. They have done nearly 650 villages on the border, turned to be more PLA uh, army, Chinese army garrison than the, that uh, relocation uh, villages. India is countering with its own vibrant villages program. The Sona Chu at about 10,000 feet flows from Tibet into Tawang district. It is joined by another river called Nyukcharong, which rises from within the Yangtze Plateau. Tsechu village, from where we arrived, lies near the confluence of the two rivers, marking the terminus of the Yangtze region. The Yangtze Plateau at about 15,000 feet is where most of the clashes have happened. In fact, there are two ways to get to Yangtze, straight uphill and a second road along the river, giving India the advantage of a loop when it needs for troop reinforcements and logistic supplies. The December 2022 clash is reported to have been the largest skirmish in the area for over 20 years since the Kargil War when similar incidents were witnessed in the Tawang sector as well. While incursion attempts happen almost every year, what's unique now is the increasing number of PLA soldiers engaged in them. One big disadvantage for the Chinese in this area is that the Indian Army occupies all the heights, including establishments at about 17,000 feet, which give a full view of the Chinese positions. The Indian Army has also layers of troops now closer to the LAC as part of the new deployment plans introduced since tensions first erupted in eastern Ladakh in 2020. So the Chinese are known to put pressure. They wouldn't let that pressure off because uh, that's the way they believe in. You know, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without a fight. So that is what they are at it. And therefore, we must be uh, doubly careful. We mustn't give in at all. And we have to be able to deal with them from a position of strength. And that position of strength is to hold and to be able to not get surprised. They should get surprised, as what happened in Yangtze. We are dog tired as we make our way back to Tawang with the sun setting and painting a pretty golden picture in the sky. After catching 40 winks, we take one last look on this trip at this starkly beautiful land. The perfect cap to our series is spending time at the Tawang War Memorial, a stupa built in memory of the 2,420 soldiers who died in the Kaming district in the 1962 India-China War. Surrounding the stupa are the national flag, the Army and Air Force flags, as well as flags of the 27 regiments that fought in the war. The memorial is divided into two major halls. One is a museum that houses the belongings of those killed and the other is used as an auditorium where a sound and light show reminds the audience of the war. Strat News Global documented the strategic significance of the Tawang sector in this series along the China front. Click on the icon on the top right of this video or the links in the descriptor if you missed our other episodes crossing the Sela and Neshibu tunnels, interviewing a senior army officer, traveling along the LAC to the Assam Hill and Kiafo posts, PTSO and Bumla.